just talking about you being really human and the human side of yourself. Um, you speak about feeling powerless uh, a number uh, of times in your life. Uh, and one of them was an incident in the cadet force where um, oh, yeah. two guys in your year were beaten up. Um, and that created a sort of a sense of suspicion um, in yourself uh, around sort of rules and the system, didn't it? Well, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's, you guys have, I mean, you, <laughs> clearly you've been listening to every podcast I've ever spoken on because you've got some great stuff that I don't normally talk about. But yeah, and in high school, um, I, I just watched a couple of guys who are friends of mine be beaten up, not not kind of really badly, but enough by the, the cadet force. And have and and having that endorsed by, or not dealt with by the teacher who was leading the the cadet force, which is really the shameful thing I thought. And I'm not sure if I can put my my. I'm not sure that 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 made me become an anarchist. Is like down with all rules and down with uh, whatever, but um, it does for me raise issues about speaking truth to power, uh, understanding when you have power, understanding the responsibility that comes with power. And just also for me connecting to a value I've got somewhere around that, which is around fairness and the importance of what it means to treat people fairly. And that was a deep example of a lack of fairness and um, an abuse of power. And that abuse of power is is particularly what I find disheartening. Yeah. And, and so just like off the back of, I guess, that incident and maybe some others too, you want to help people become more rebellious against the system, but in a good way, like what, what do you actually mean by that? Yeah. I, I would frame it um, as less about rebelling against the system, but more about not giving up your own humanity to the system. You know, uh, one of the thinkers and writers that I admire is a guy called Peter Block. Um, he, he, his most, his best selling book is called The um, uh, Flawless Consulting. But um, his more philosophical books, uh, things like The Answer to How is Yes. And he says just broadly, he says, look, my job or one way of framing the work that he does is to give people responsibility for their own freedom. And he would say that in most power structures and in particular organizations, which is where he did a lot of work and I do my work, there's just an inherent bias to dehumanize people or make them, I mean, it sounds a bit more dramatic perhaps than, than it actually is, but certainly a way of saying you can give up your sense of autonomy. You can, you know, it's pretty easy to have a parent child relationship with the organization with whom you work rather than an adult to adult relationship. And you kind of just go, look, best thing for me to do is just head down and just play the system. And for me, it's, um, you know, I, I mean, I run a small company, so I don't really want everybody who works at Box of Crayons to rebel against me and overthrow <laughs> me. That's, that would be a, sl a confusing <laughs> outcome. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I do, I do want them to take responsibility for their lives and how they show up at work and for the choices they make. And what that means is being willing to stand up against the tide if, if need be. Michael, I was, a, I was an investment banker for almost 20 years and now I actually work as a, an executive coach myself. But um, looking back, I'm like, oh my word, things, I, I was like, I was like a manager and I was like, oh my God, I was such a useless manager. Right. Um, if only I knew how to coach people, it would have been a complete different outcome for all the people that worked underneath me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's such an important part of it. it it's just not done in the business yeah. world. It's not, it's not the only way to lead, but it's a really powerful and effective and significantly underutilized way to lead. And so we're trying to shift the balance of that just a little bit. Mm, for sure. So Michael, in your opinion, you, you kind of touched on it there, Gareth already, but why is it important to have a coach and, maybe who should have a coach? Yeah, so it's worth distinguishing 
between coaching and helping managers and leaders be more coach-like. So for us, our focus is, and I'll, I'll answer your question, but just to say our focus is that we think everybody can be a bit more coach-like in the way they show up to the world. And by more coach-like, we mean this. Can you stay curious a little bit longer? Can you rush to action and advice giving a little bit more slowly? Mm. And that shift of behavior is something that doesn't matter if you're a big boss leader, middle of the pack, an individual contributor, a brand new employee, showing up in this world, being a bit curious a little bit longer and rushing to action and advice giving a little bit more slowly is a good skill to have. Also, if you're a human being, a parent, (laughs) a, a parent or a child, or you just interact with other human beings in your day, that's a good thing to have. So that, that's our focus. The question about, so who should have a coach? Well, you know, in a perfect world, I think you have people in your lives who are supportive in that I'm curious sort of way, rather than I'm telling you what to do sort of way. There's, mm-hmm. a, there's a place for advice, don't get me wrong, but it tends to be an overused muscle rather than an underused muscle. And then I think uh, if you're if you're lucky enough to have the resources and you have a specific need, excuse me, a, a coach can be a really powerful part of your success team. Let's put it like that. It's a bit kind of new agey. Mm. But, you know, for me, I've had a coach for most of the last 20 years, one way or another, in part because I've had things that I want to achieve. And I just know that it's helpful to have somebody on my side who, pushes me when I need to be pushed and encourages me when I need to be encouraged and helps me face into the hard things I'm trying to avoid and gives me the courage to take on some of the stuff that I probably wouldn't otherwise. And sometimes that's been a formal relationship. So I've paid somebody for a you know, bi-weekly chat, um, mm. you know, similar to what Gareth does. Um, but I also have, for instance, a mastermind group. So we've met for the last probably 10 or 12 years Hmm. And we effectively informally coach and support each other. So your your coach is about somebody who plays a role of championing curiosity, championing you, and showing up with that fierce love to say, look, I'm on your side, and I want to push you and encourage you to be the best version of yourself. And sometimes that's a paid position, and sometimes it's not. Hmm. So, so Michael, what, what sort of like coach does a person like you get? Is it a business coach? Is it a personal development coach what sort of coach yeah. when you do pay for it yeah so you know with my mastermind trust and actually when i finish this podcast with you guys i i have it my by uh by monthly oh no so twice a month bi-weekly conversation with with them you know um they're more they started off around business issues because we we're all kind of similarly placed in the business that we were running 12 years ago but really over time it's become much more about leadership in terms of how are you showing up in your life how are you how are you being the person you want to be mm. and uh, the business stuff is secondary to that um my actual business coach who i've had for 13 years now hmm. Ernest, he he's much more of a kind of sounding board uh helping me figure out hard decisions for box of crayons you know money decisions people decisions strategy decisions um, so he, he helps me with everything from the big, the big picture vision that I'm trying to hold to sometimes it's like, how do I have this negotiation conversation with this person? Yeah. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy cape fold, my-